All right. Hey, we are um, part uh, three. I think, yeah, part three of birds. Um, what we're going to be doing for the next several parts um, is we are going to be um, going through um, the different characteristics birds have um, and really spend a lot of time focusing on, on each individual ones um, because they are so unique. And the biggest thing that they're unique about is they are adapted for flight. Okay, well, that's going to be a common theme is that all of these different structures have adaptions, modifications that are about um, flight. And so that is our focus here. And we're going to start off with birds have a different bone structure. All right. And they have it in a variety of ways. Everyone says, oh, birds bone, bird bones are hollow. Well, okay. But um, there are a lot of other differences um, as well. Um, the first one you have on here is no teeth. Okay, so we take it for granted that birds have beaks instead. Um, you know, they're reptilian ancestors. You know, Archaeopteryx had, you know, kind of a, have a, a toothy jaw. Um, teeth are weight, all right? That, that's as simple as it is, is that teeth are extra weight um, that the bird wanted to get rid of. In addition to, I shouldn't say that, um, one of the areas where they have a little bit more bone than others is their eyes have what's called the sclerotic ring. And I have a um, picture of that later on. Um, we'll be talking about bird vision is actually more advanced than ours is. Um, they have a lot more intense focus than human beings have. And part of it is they have this, this bone in their eye that allows the, that lens to grip onto something and really focus in. Many of the bones are hollow. Now they're not, you know, like completely empty. Instead, they kind of have this honeycomb lattice in there. Um, that gives it it's um, just enough strength to um, be just fine, but um, reduces the weight. And then they have a couple other unique bones that you're going to see today on your um, assignment in there as well. One is the furcula. All right. Uh, you and I call that the wishbone. All right. Thanksgiving is uh, coming around the corner, at least the time I'm recording this. And so you probably have you know, talked about the, the um, furcula or the wishbone of the turkey. Um, those are the turkey's collarbones. Now, you and I have two collarbones. They start right at the sternum and work our way to our, um, to our shoulder girdle. If you are a bird, they connect in the middle. Okay, they connect in the middle, and they kind of have that scoop out front there because they have a keel-shaped um, sternum. So our sternums are flat. We have a, a flat, broad chest where birds, their sternums kind of come to this keel. It allows their, their chest muscles to hook onto it um, and be, grow a lot bigger because if you think about it, they're, you know, us as humans, we got big legs um, so that we can move around on our feet. They have big chest muscles so that they can fly. And that keel also gives, helps out with a little bit of aerodynamics in there as well. Um, they reduce the number of digits, okay, so they don't have as many fingers as you and I do. And then their tibia and fibula, which are the two bones in your lower leg. For humans, it is, I mean, oh boy, I'm going to trade my leg up on camera here. Okay, these two bones down here, your tib tibia and fibula. Uh, if you're a bird, you just got one of those, okay? So there's just one that, that's fused together there. Here's a look at that um, sclerotic ring that you see there. So here's the eye and the, the, um, the owl skull, excuse me. And then there's that sclerotic ring, that bone that's in the eye in there. Here's a look at that honeycomb look of, of bone. So yes, we have some hollow spaces, but then the bone itself has kind of this, this light honeycombing that still gives it its, its strength, um, but it reduces the weight significantly. And what that does is it gives birds a lot of, um, Bird weight is very different than what we'd expect. Okay, a bald eagle stands three feet tall. It's got a seven-foot wingspan. It's a huge bird. If you've ever been close to a bald eagle, it is a massive bird. Uh, it weighs six to 14 pounds. Okay, it is a, a just, like I said, it's a massive animal, um, but yet its weight is, is less than 15 pounds. Okay, almost all of us could take 15 pounds and, and lift it with one hand as a piece of cake. And we would be moving one of the biggest birds on the planet there. Um, the red-tailed hawk, that's one of the biggest hawks that we see frequently. It's about two and a half pounds. 
right? Uh, if you've been in, uh, actually, I have one here. If you've been in the uh, weight room, all right, this is this is what two and a half pounds is. All right, there's a two and a half pound plate. It is the lightest plate that we uh, many weight rooms have, and that is what a red tail hawk weighs. Um, Northern Cardinals are one and a half ounces, so not even you know a, a, a tiny fraction of a pound. And then the lightest bird is the ruby-throated hummingbird at 3.4 grams. That's about five paper clips is about how much that weighs. So just kind of it's um, miraculous how they are able to do that. Um, there's a lot of other features in there that um, expedite their weight as well. So um, there's a little bit about bird bones. Uh, you have an assignment following this. The assignment is, um, well, we'll have to try our best on it. There's like some coloring with it. Um, you might have to get creative, whether you do it on paint or do it. Uh, um, yeah, if you, yeah, I, I trust that you guys will find a way to do some skeletal labeling there. So best of luck and enjoy the rest of your day.